This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Parents, be advised that there is graphic language and sexual content in today's show. It is definitely not for children. Today in the Dr. Phil House, Man Camp continues. How many women have you cheated with? Do the math. I'm not good at math. If you want to me, I'm not you didn't answer the question. Three troubled marriages. You believe that women are just a bunch of stupid <laughs> and that you married this one because she gave good <laughs> are put to the test. What are you doing being a stripper? My husband would not allow me to be a stripper. I have more pride than that. I just don't think it's any of your business. I don't go take my clothes off in front of guys and have guys touch me every night. Your point is? That's not a, what a wife does. For somebody that has done exactly what she's done, you seem to be perched awfully high on the high horse. I'm not going to sit here and listen to this. I'm sorry. I can't do this. This is none of your business. Do you have a just because he asked me what you thought? Does that mean you have the right to sit there and lecture me like you're my mother? No. And you're in love with somebody else. Well, he's here. Be there for the confrontation with the other man. If you were sleeping with my wife, you wouldn't have made it two steps in the door. Man Camp starts right now. Coming up. Let's do it. I want you to get excited about your life. Here we go. In 10. Stand by, camera uh -huh. set. If you're going to talk to me, you're going to have to be honest. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Showtime. This is going to be a changing day in your life. I'm taking people with real problems and moving them into the Dr. Phil house. I'm going to put you under a microscope. Need a camera here, need one here. I'm putting cameras everywhere to see what really happens behind closed doors. I am moving in with you. Today, we're continuing our Man Camp series. Three couples on the brink of divorce moved into the Dr. Phil house because they wanted to save their marriages. Now, the wives told me their husbands were so controlling that they yelled if the toilets weren't cleaned correctly or if their spoons had spots. The men argued that the women were doing everything from having affairs to slashing tires. The fireworks began immediately when we asked the husbands to walk in their wives' shoes and do some cleaning. One of the husbands refused to clean, went into an intense rage, hung up on me, got into a huge fight with his wife, and almost quit the show. Then another couple broke the rules when a husband walked across town in a desperate search to find his wife. I had to sit down with the couples and figure out if the marriages even had a chance of survival. Before we continue, here's what happened last week. Tara and I have been together for about four years. Scott wants me to be a 1950s trophy wife. Scott expects me to wait on him hand and foot. Tara and I fight every day. When we fight for my daughter, she usually gets upset and cries. It's traumatizing. I'm with the Dr. Phil Show. We're here to send you out to man camp. Man camp. I hope you come back a grown man. My wife Amanda and I have been married for five years. My husband never even told his family about me until I was pregnant. They thought that he just knocked up some girl. Nick and I fight every day. I have said you to Amanda. We fight in front of the children all the time. I told Amanda I felt like we shouldn't have had children together. He's told me to wish that I had abortions with both of our children. I'm a dancer at a go-go bar. She was having an affair with another person. She said she's in love with him, but she's ready to leave. I have one foot out the door. We're about to take you to man camp. Seriously? Sherry and I have been married for 14 years. We have three children. I've called Sherry slut, bitch, or fat ass. And I think that I am superior to women. I'm here to take you to Dr. Phil's man camp. You signed up for man camp? It's time to get real. Who's a leader in this family? Not me. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the problem, isn't it? If she would be an adult and be able to have a conversation like me and you are having right now, even though we're not exactly meeting eye to eye because you think I'm and I think maybe you don't know what you're talking about. You sorry you're here? I'm sorry I came to this. Won't you leave? 
So she can go dance naked in front of a stranger and feel good, but she can't feel good with her own husband in her own home. You must be doing something way wrong. John will say in a group of men, we all know why I married Sherry. She gives good <laughs> That's funny. You really don't want to work on your marriage. You're in love with somebody else. You stood there like the little Stepford wife he wants you to be. I want divorce papers drawn up. He's not going to be happy. This is going to just be like, what the f happened here? OK, husbands, take a look around. Dr. Phil House is a little messed up. And it's your job to clean it up before you move in. Does your house ever look like this? You think mine has? Think I'd live here? I'd move the f out and sell the house. I'm not playing this game. Get Dr. Phil on the phone and, and make him answer how this exercise helps my relationship. Let me tell you something. For a guy that has run his relationship off in the ditch, it seems to me like you'd be looking for somebody else to be making decisions instead of you. Well, for a guy that's supposed to help relationships heal themselves, it seems to me like you'd know what the f was going on and explain to me how this helps. You're not entitled to an explanation. Take me home. But he just has to be approached a different way. Then I tell you what, you just need to go get in the car with him and go home. You're a f Scott. I'm done. You move my out while I'm gone. Thanks, Dr. Phil. Oh, it ain't Dr. Phil's fault, yeah. Scott. It's yours. Take me to the airport. Oh my God, I was so convinced that you were gone. I'm not a child. Well, you're acting like one no, when you do see, that. see, and you're doing it now. I don't appreciate but, it. But I don't care whether you appreciate it or not. Why do you say you would do anything for him when you know that it's absolutely unequivocally not true? You won't shut up. This other man, I want him gone. I'm going to bring him here, and you're going to tell him in front of me, it's over. Get out of my life. The other man is on his way here. I am doing this so that way I can have closure, regardless of whether Nick and I make it or not. My name's Juanita. I'm Amanda's mother-in-law. There is tension between Amanda and I. There is tension between my son Nick and I also. I have to be careful and measure my words because a simple look or action can get twisted around to mean something totally different to them. I first met my daughter-in-law, Amanda, after she married my son. They invited her family to the wedding. I didn't find out that he got married till about a week after. I have serious issues with my mother-in-law. When Nick's mom first heard of me, all she knew is I was just some stripper that her son knocked up. It killed me that she thought of me that way. Amanda feels tense and nervous when my mom's around. There was a point when Amanda was so irrational that she started yelling and screaming and cursing at me. And I said, Amanda, I can't take any more of this. I'm leaving. And she said, good, get the f out and don't come back. And that was the last I saw my grandchildren. No matter how hard I tried, I don't have a good relationship with my son and daughter-in-law. Amanda and Nick both told us that Amanda's relationship with her mother-in-law, Juanita, was so far in the ditch that Nick's mom wasn't even invited to their wedding. Well, I decided to bring Juanita to the Dr. Phil house anyway so we could figure out why these women just couldn't seem to get along. So what's your mother think of her? I really don't know. I don't know what mom thinks. You really don't? I really don't. We're very, don't like, polite to each other but I don't, I don't believe the way that she says she feels about me is really the way she feels. Now, your mother-in-law is here, and I want to bring her in. Hi, guys. Have a seat right over here. OK. Hi. Juanita, good morning. Good morning. Look, here's the deal, guys. If we're going to make this work, then I know what all of the parts and pieces are. What is your problem with his mother? I feel that our entire family has been an inconvenience to you. I feel like any time that we actually have an issue where like we have to call, it's like a huge issue to get help at all. It began with the day that my grandmother passed away, like, and she goes, OK, I will totally be there for you that day. And I was like, oh, thank goodness I can count on you. And like, it was probably about five or six, she's like, you know, I got to get home. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, just go. I don't need anybody. I can do this by myself. I'm always by myself. Just go. <laughs> And when I was at my grandmother's funeral, she was like, so you coming home tonight? And I'm like, I just got done with my grandmother's funeral. I can't leave right now. I mean, when I came home, I was like, that's it. I can't handle this anymore. I can't deal about her all the time. The issue is she feels like you don't respect her 
as an adult and that you will say, yeah, I want to help you, but when it gets down to it, it's like, this is such an inconvenience, I really need to go. But I don't know why. I've always tried to be there From for the you. From the time you get out of the car till the time you get to the house, you're cussing up a storm house much it sucks to be there. Maybe that's where what? I get it from. This is not like a once in a while thing. This is all the time. She's just going to get up and walk away, as always. No, I'm not going to get up and walk away, Amanda. Well, every time, everything you said and put your twist on it, I can say the same Sorry, thing. put your twist on and it. And put my twist on it. You know how much I enjoy being with those kids. How many people then how do you... how come you have not been there since this happened? How come you've let mine and your relationship determine whether you get to see your children? You could have them. If you didn't want to see me, I'll drop them off where you want to see them. It's not that. It was from the time it, that led up to the point where you threw me out of the house, where I said, I can't take any more of this abuse. And you said, get the f out of my house and don't come back. I figured the best thing to do if I was a stressor in your life was to stay out of your life. So I backed off. So what do you want for this relationship? What I want now, I want her and I to get over the gripe and bitching over who the hell's right and who's wrong and try and get along and stop taking so much crap out of each other, respect each other as adults. I want her to be that loving grandmother that comes over at Christmas and can't wait to hold the grandkids. Coming up, Nick finally tells his mother how he feels. It was always an inconvenience to you. She had to... Well, maybe you were too sensitive. Plus, the other couples weigh in on Amanda's stripping. I would ride a bike before I'd be a stripper. Shut up! No, yeah. I'm not gonna shut up. Across this great country, from coast to coast, you've told me about the crossroads we're facing. That's exactly why I wrote, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. This book isn't just a conversation starter. It's a roadmap for standing strong in the face of adversity, for embracing our core values when they're needed most. We're talking about real strategies for real people dealing with real issues, from navigating the complexities of today's polarized world to fortifying our families. And I set forth in the book 10 principles that I think are critical for a healthy society. This is not about politics. I'm not a politician, don't want to be a politician, don't know enough about politics to talk about it but I talk about every angle of life as we know it, from family and relationships to the burning issues that are shaping our world today. We've got issues, how you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity. And you'll find it anywhere books are sold. It's about time we start addressing what truly matters. On Oops! The Podcast, join me, comedian Julio Gallarotti, as I examine everyday life, the mistakes, the bad decisions, the goals, the jokes, the social engagements, and all things in between. I'm joined every week by producer and personal confidant, Ryan Lynch, various other comedians for witty, candid, and intoxicating conversation. Our listeners love Oops! for its sophisticated banter, aka your mom could listen, and many feel like they're in the room with us chopping it up with old pals. You can find every episode of the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. We now return to Man Camp in the Dr. Phil house. Why didn't you invite her to the wedding? He didn't feel comfortable. He said that they would talk us out of being, getting married. So it was your decision not to invite your mother? I'm not close to my family. Look me in the face and tell me what's She's, wrong, honey. I remember back when I, I started swim team, you're gonna miss X-Files. Okay, they picked me up on swim team. I, so it was always an inconvenience to you, because you had to- Well, because you, things. maybe you were too sensitive. I, yeah, all right, I am sensitive. Okay. Sorry, I'm sensitive. Well, I'm guilty well, for I'm it. Sorry I got, like, my life was an inconvenience to you. Like me going to swim team, trying to do something was an inconvenience to you. I remember as the early back is like, freaking. <laughs> I, I can't. No, calm down, honey. Talk to me. Say what you want to say. This is the time. This is the time to say it, Nick. <sighs> the spur back is like, grammar school, feeling bad because of your weight. Like, all the other moms were thin and, you know, attractive. <laughs> like, I felt responsible for it. Oh. I don't know. I don't know why I felt responsible. Stupid. I, you know, I shouldn't feel... I, I, don't, I don't know. In a perfect world, what would your relationship be with your mom? I don't even know what the perfect world is. I have no, I, I have no concept of that. Do you want a relationship with her with your family now? Yeah. 
Is this a matter of inconvenience to you, Juanita? I never knew he felt that way because he pulled away from me and he never communicated these things to me. Can I say something? Please. I'm angry with the situations that you and I have, mm -hmm. but I just want you to know that I, it's not that I hate you. I don't. I do love you. Okay. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get this on the table so we could make a plan and get it moving, and I thank you for coming out here to do that. It was pretty emotional for me to tell my mom these things. I had no idea whatsoever that that was the way he felt. I didn't have to have uh, Dr. Phil there, mediate and explain things. When I told my mother-in-law how I felt, it hurt, but it felt really good to be able to get it off my chest. We were able to make some progress with Nick and Amanda by bringing Juanita to the Dr. Phil house. But now, we needed to get Amanda to end her affair. Now, she met her boyfriend at the club where she works as a stripper. Why was Nick putting up with her job, let alone her extramarital affair? I decided the other man needed to come to Los Angeles for a little confrontation. Before that, I asked the entire group to talk to Nick and Amanda. There are some things I don't understand about what's going on. I, I gotta ask you both, what are you doing being a stripper? And how is that okay with you? We're having money problems, and uh, you know, I wanna get a second job. And she said, no, it's not fair for you to have two jobs and get to go out and socialize while I have to sit at home. How do you feel about your wife being a stripper? You know, um, she, she's done it in the past. And in the past, she always came home to me, so do I like guys touching her, looking at her like that? No. What, what do you think about it? I am so proud that I can provide for my family. I don't care what anybody else thinks. So why is this so hard for you to hear? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gonna be honest about this, okay? My husband would not allow me to be a dancer. I have more pride than that. And if I had to give up my house and my home to give my kids the things, get mad at me, I don't care. I just You're... don't think it's any of your business. Well, you know what? I just got asked by Dr. Phil, so let, let me talk, okay? Fine. Right? I think it's so easy for you to point the finger at my family. Look at what you have right now. I, I would okay. ride a bike before I'd be a stripper. Good for you. Don't my life is not about effect. you. I am a grown woman, and I I'm will do... I'm not saying my life is perfect, but I am no stripper. And let me right. tell you what. And you know what? You right. got a boyfriend. You don't think that, that has anything to do with the fact that you have a boyfriend? I can't sit here and listen to this. I can't. I'm not going to sit here and listen to Where'd this. Where'd you I'm meet sorry. your boyfriend? I can't do Where this. did you meet I not? need to go. I can't do this. Please. Damn it, I have to live Please. with these people. Holy She's not asking my permission to do, do that. I'm not. It's a question whether or not I'll Where'd support her. Where'd you meet your decisions. boyfriend? Where'd right, you meet on. your boyfriend? This is not your business. <laughs> well, he asked me what I thought. I'm sitting here. You're just a <laughs> Damn it, just because he asked me what she thought, does that mean you have the right to sit there and lecture me like you're my mother? Shut up. No, yeah, I'm not going to shut up. That's why we're here for help. <laughs> Don't though. even I mean, talk. We're not here because up. I dance. Not because you dance, but I mean, that's OK. You want to get your you kids have... a Christmas present? All right, time out. Do you think you're being judgmental? I'm not looking just Just answer my question. Do you think you're being judgmental? Absolutely. Because you're saying she's got a boyfriend. Hell, you've had an affair in your marriage. Absolutely. It seems to me that Absolutely. you'd have a hard time finding a free hand to throw a rock. Absolutely, but I don't go take my clothes off in front of guys and have guys touch me every night. Your point is? That's not a, what a wife does. Temptation in a bad marriage is the worst thing that you can have. That's how I feel. Can I say something? I am not tempted by any of the men I dance with. I think it's disgusting that a man will look at me in a sexual way. Would you prefer she not be a stripper? At first, when first started, I felt really, you know. Um, That's a yes or no question. You're right. Um, I prefer she not be. No. She's doing what she's doing, and it needs to be done, and that's, that's a choice she makes. I'll support her. How would you feel about your wife being a stripper? You know, there's no way, and you know, everybody here knows, I mean, Tara was separate earlier this year. That's because she worked at a bar. She wasn't even able to, like, to, for guys to touch her, but just the fact that there's a bunch of drunk guys in there to be constantly working. hitting on her, that's one of the main reasons we got separated, because like, she wouldn't quit her job at the bar. I don't know part of it. How about you? I wouldn't let my wife be one. No, no way. It's not about letting her do anything. I don't control her. You need to. Coming up. This job is going to break you two apart. These people are so nuts. 
understanding at all. What's more important to you, money or a happy home? Survival. I've been at rock bottom. You don't know my life. And the other man comes to town. You've got to get this guy out of your life. The guy's a regular at a strip joint. I mean, are you kidding me? Look, here's the thing. I've been dealing with human functioning for a long, long time. I've had strippers as patients. Some of them were hardworking and dedicated and loving mothers. Um, I think you're a hardworking, dedicated, and loving mother. Yes. I think there's any question about that. That doesn't make that environment healthy. I agree. It is toxic. It will be the end of this marriage if you don't change it. And, you know, y'all can judge what she's doing. That's not helpful. Uh, do you judge her as a dedicated and loving mother? What I'm saying is this job is going to break you two apart. Man, I had another job. I promise I'd take it like that. I, I would do whatever I could for my family. Can I ask you a question? What, what's more important to you? Money? Or, or, or a happy home. Survival. Okay, so, we two, need brand, to eat so to two live. brand new cars is more important God. to you? No, it's not. Okay, all These I'm people saying are is you so can not understanding you can at all. I, how can you sit there and let me judge just, me? Let me tell you something right quick, Amanda. I've been at rock bottom. I know what rock bottom's like. I know what it's like not right, to have anything. but you don't know I've my life. I've had to sell a brand new car to get to, to make it work for my family. I know what it's like. Trust me, my life's not great. I would never go do that because there's you. a million jobs. Good there's a million jobs out there. Get two jobs. That is not your place. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. you got to be willing to hear people's opinions. The reason that I have everybody here together is because I want everybody to get an idea of what the challenges are, and each of you can appreciate your own situation. You don't like being judged. You two are being judgmental yeah, about absolutely. it. I'd have a hard time finding women that wouldn't be judgmental about it. Women aren't going to like somebody doing that job, which creates temptations for their husband. Let's talk about what we agree on. What we agree on is that you have to be responsible for what you bring into your marriage. If you want this marriage to survive, then you got to quit stripping. You've said, this is survival for me. You're doing it to buy milk and toys and clothing for your children. That's one way to get it. There are other ways to get it as well. And I tell you what, I would walk or ride a bike before I'd let my wife strip. It's unhealthy. The clientele that you have in there is unhealthy. The guy you're having an affair with, you met at the strip joint. Now you can say, well, I could have met him at Target. I could have met him down at the church. That's right, but you didn't. You met him at a strip joint. So, and, and then you say, I'm, I'm falling in love with this guy, okay? I, I'm sorry, the guy's a regular at a strip joint. That's his resume. Amanda, it, it tells me you're losing your compass. Now, people say, well, you're just being judgmental, Dr. Phil. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you what the truth is. This is a, a very unhealthy environment for you to be in. And it's already spawned an affair that has got your relationship completely off point. I'll get you some financial counseling that will help you work this out if necessary. I'll help you get a job. I'll do whatever is necessary. We'll all help you and you got to get this guy out of your life. Hello. I mean, are you kidding me? You've, you've got this guy it, that, that, what do you think about that? Are you, are you okay with that too? No, I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with that. Um, you've been trying to meet this guy, right? You've wanted to confront him, you wanted to talk to him. I wanted to confront him. Well, he's here. The other man traveled to Los Angeles because he said he wanted Amanda to choose him. But I was very clear with Amanda that if she wanted her marriage to have any chance of survival, she needed to tell this other man to take a hike, it is over. The other man asked that we protect his identity and that we change his name. Uh, here we are on the way to the Dr. Phil show. I'm here in support for my friend Amanda. What's gonna happen to Mr. Tuolos? The way I feel about the other man coming is nervous. The reason that I am doing this is because I want to prove to Nick how much I love him. 
Amanda is doing this because she wants to give me the evidence that I can trust her. And I think she's doing it for herself also. That way she can have closure with him. Amanda means a lot to me. First and foremost, she's become a very near and dear friend to me. We, we share a lot of the same interests and outlooks. And as I got to know her, she also started telling me her marriage is not working. It's not a happy marriage. And she was actually looking to get out. So I didn't see any harm in actually allowing that relationship to develop. I don't know if this other man's going to come out and be mad. I would be pretty upset if I had travel across the country just to be dumped and then just have to travel all the way back. I think the other man is just going to start bawling and crying. I would be heartbroken if she decides to end the relationship because I'm in love with her. Coming up, the other man goes head to head with Dr. Phil and Nick. It's not a personal attack. Don't get on this self-righteous about I'm attacking you. Come straight forward and say, I will not contact you anymore. I want to hear you say it. If you were sleeping with my wife, you wouldn't have made it two steps in the door. We now return to Dr. Phil's man camp. In my opinion, one of Nick and Amanda's most dangerous threats to this marriage was that she was currently having an affair with a man she met in the strip club where she works. Now, I told them from day one that she needed to end the affair once and for all. So we brought the other man to Los Angeles to face off with the couple. Nick had never laid eyes on his wife's lover. Little did he know, but the other man hoped Amanda would choose him over her husband. The other man asked that his identity be protected. You've been trying to meet this guy, right? You've wanted to confront him. You wanted to talk to him. I wanted to confront him. Well, he's here. We're going to bring him in right now. We're going to set him down. Phil McGraw, how you doing? We're going to call you Tom. What are you doing involved with this married woman? Start as a friendship that developed into something else. And when I first situation, it felt like she was in a situation where she was actually going to be ready to leave the marriage. Anything you want to say? Oh, back off. Stay away. Don't stop interfering. Give us, give our family a chance. You know, if you were a good, you know, decent person, you'd understand family and marriage. Well, you and, left him a message and said you wanted an in-person meeting. Why? I didn't see him in person because it's real hard to lie and manipulate in person. But do you understand that this man sitting in this room right now, at this moment, wants her to choose him? True? I, I would love her to be with me. Yes, that's correct. I, I don't know how this doesn't enrage you. If you were sleeping with my wife, you wouldn't have made it two steps in the door. Hold on. You say, she says, well, I'm having trouble in my marriage. The fact that it is having a difficult time is not something that you should just say, oh, well, then she's vulnerable. Do you not have a boundary that says, I'm not going to be involved with somebody that is married because it disrespects the union, and I need to move on? And if six months from now she's gotten a divorce and she's interested, I will absolutely pursue her. Since you personally attacked me, I'm going to get very straight it's to the point. It's not a personal attack. You said it just happened, like, whoops, we're at a hotel. Whoops, we're having sex. Whoops, we're exchanging love letters and phone calls and cooing. I mean, that's not an accident. Come on. And you made a that conscious choice yes, to do that. So well, don't get on this self-righteous about I'm attacking you and saying that would that's something that just happened. I think any husband would ask, and I think you would ask that question. Yes, I would have. And what, okay. what I was correcting you, you said like you made it out that I actually purposely set out from the very beginning to do this. No, I did not. So we're back to the whoops theory? Come on, you're involved with a married woman. You're right. This is on the cover of the Dud Journal. You don't fix a marriage by turning to somebody outside the marriage. You don't add another man to your life. Are you still involved with him? No. You slept with him a couple of weeks ago and you talked to him two days before you came. So that's sending you a signal that she's interested in talking to you, right? Okay, when did you decide that you weren't interested in pursuing this? When I saw that Nick was serious about this, when I saw the look in his eyes, how he was dedicated to changing, like I could see that he really wants to change, that, that's what I said, okay, I'm gonna do this. Okay, what's your response to that? If that's, it actually works their marriage, I'm happy for that. I mean, I'm sad for my for me in general, yes, but overall, I can deal with that. You know, stay out of her life completely. Emails, phones, smoke signals. You know, are you laughing? You think it's funny? No, you think I, it's I funny? Think it's whole now I'm starting to get real pissed. You see her walk on the street. You walk the other way. Now, Amanda, your husband has said to him what he wants. What do you say? I don't want to have any contact with you because I want to work on a marriage with my husband. 
you made that decision, I would respect that. Come straight forward and say, I will not contact you anymore. I want to hear you say it. I, I will contact not you. contact her anymore. Is that what you want to hear? Yes, that's what and I want to hear. I will not contact her anymore. End story. Thank you. Okay, I think we're through with, with Tom. I think we can let him excuse himself. I hope that she actually can honestly look at herself and say that she's not, she doesn't have any more feelings for me, that she has feelings for her husband. Because it's gonna be very sad to go through all this for the sake of nothing, for the sake of having a marriage that's gonna fail in six months from now. Do you think I did the right thing? I'm just curious, because you guys have I a lot. I think when you get back home that you will have contact with that guy. You want my honest answer, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Okay. Can you not see I'm hurting right now? How much more do you have to dig? Do you not see that I regret what I've done? Have you not seen the shame that I have? I think she's got a good point. What do you want her to do that she's not doing? I yeah, mean, for true. somebody that has done exactly what she's done, you seem to be perched awfully high on the high horse. Because I think that she isn't being real with herself. Well, I think you're not being real with yourself. Is it exceedingly clear to everybody here that having involvements, emotional affairs, physical affairs, flirtations, call them whatever you want, have no place in a marriage. Every one of these relationships needs a hero. It's not a 50-50 deal. I'll quit if you'll quit, no. Someone quit whether you quit or not. You learn, you evolve, you change, and all of a sudden you look back at what you've been doing and you go, oh my God, what, why have we been doing that? Then you realize what your kids are going through. Coming up, Cherry thinks John is lying to Dr. Phil, and she storms into the house to confront him. That is such a lie. If you would like to purchase a tape or transcript of your favorite Dr. Phil show, log on to drphil.com or call 866-4-DR-PHIL. That's 866-437-7445. 866-437-7445. We now return to Dr. Phil's Man Camp. In the 14 years John and Sherry had been married, they both cheated. He had two affairs, she had one. John said that he believed men were superior to women and admitted to physically abusing Sherry for years. Sherry said she constantly lived in fear that anything she said or did could just set him off. So I sat down with John to just talk man to man as Sherry watched our conversation from another location. Today is going to be a turning point in my life because I am going to tell John how I feel. I'm here to tell the truth. That's what I'm gonna go in there with. I'm gonna tell him, you know what, you treat me like crap. I'm not taking it anymore. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm all right. Good. What's a home run for you? If this goes perfect, I mean, if we knock it out of the park for you, what is that? Well, for me and my wife to, to get along perfectly, I mean, we all have our problems, but just to be able to communicate together and have a good marriage. You say women are stupid and they're all the same, and that you married this one because she gave good Come on, you can't possibly think that any self-respecting woman is going to put up with that over any period of time. What you said does not happen on a daily basis, and it has not I'm not saying it happens on a daily basis, but I'm saying if that's your attitude, we can't change it if you don't acknowledge it. Well, I do. I acknowledge what I've what I, I I've don't done. want you to acknowledge anything you didn't write, but just the attitude about how you feel about women. How I've felt about women. You've talked to Sherry. I haven't called her a and John's called me a Years. I didn't make that word up. I'm ready now. Come in. Uh -huh. Hi. I'm not real happy right now. Why is that? We're on the show, to be honest, and to put it all on the table. John, this is not going to work if we're not going to be completely honest. Tell me what I'm not being okay, honest about. Okay, you know what? You sat here and just said that you have not called me a that is such a lie. No, 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 wait a minute. I haven't called you a in a while. All I'm saying, John, is that I am scared to death of you. What are you afraid of me about? I'm afraid to talk to you about things. That's the problem. And I have changed. 
Mm -hmm. And you've also said, I've changed. You've changed to the point that we don't go to bars and there's no infidelity. You don't cheat and When's beat. When's the last time I beat? Seven years ago. And you know why he doesn't cheat on me anymore, I believe? Because I cheated on him. That's not how you get back at somebody, huh? OK, besides the point, why did we stop cheating? Because you finally felt the hurt. The counselor that we talked to before said, you put the past to the past and move forward. You guys have got lack of communication. You're hiding money, you're stealing money, okay, you need to talk my, about it. Do you? Do I steal money? Absolutely Have not. Have you hidden money? Absolutely not. You know what? $120,000, nothing to sneeze about. Do you guys want to spend your time here with me doing math? No, I don't. If you do, I, I'm just going to go no, on to I my don't. next thing. There's lots of people in this world that uh, their problems are over finances. I mean, so that gives you the right to verbally abuse me? No, I didn't. I'm here because I got a problem, and so do you. What's your problem? Our problem isn't everything. No, what's your problem? Well, I, I, I don't trust her. Do you think the fact that you believe that you are superior to women gives you a condescending air in this relationship? Yes. Do you think you manage by intimidation? and that you've got a history of abuse and you're now a bully to the point that she gets sick to her stomach when she knows she's gonna have to deal with you. Do you think that's true? That's true. How many women have you cheated with? Think about it, do the math on that. I'm not good at math. John, if you wanna me, then- I'm not Yeah. Two. Since we've been married? Since we've been married. You believe that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> Come on, Sherry. It doesn't matter if it's one or two or three. It's not a good, affairs aren't good for either one of us. What is it you're seeking to achieve when you do that? To hurt her feelings. So you want to inflict pain on her? Yeah. He beat the crap out of me because I was cheating on him. The next day I find out he's cheating. Let, let me just ask y'all, does this seem anywhere remotely right no to you no there's not a good there's no. not a good thing but you know what we haven't fought like this like we are right now i couldn't tell you when because she doesn't fight back i'm afraid of you you know what i i'm gonna tell you what i'm gonna don't exaggerate That's I, all I'm right now you. i'm gonna say this if this does not work this week and we cannot get real and get past this i'm done i'm completely done i'm walking away and i'm done that's good that'd be neutral feelings Okay, then we better work on what we're here to work on. I told you I've come in here to fix our marriage, not my marriage. We call it man camp. John, who's sitting next to you? My wife. So apparently there's a lot more to it than just you. She's here. That's nice. That's nice. John's comfort zone is his anger. Any other emotions are very threatening to him. It's awfully easy to point your finger at somebody else. There's two sides of the story. As long as we're talking about her, we ain't talking about me. People just get lost in a sea of minutia because it's where they feel safe. You're hiding money, you're stealing money. Let's talk about a topic so we can totally ignore the issue over here. We got infidelity, verbal abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse. You, you know what, $120,000 not to sneeze about. Well, let's talk about math. That's why they're in the ditch because they never talk about what matters. Coming up. When I do say, John, I want to sit down and talk to you, he puts his feet up on the table and this is what he does. All right, talk. What do you got to say now? That's no different than if you walked over and spit in her face. And John's mother-in-law pays a surprise visit. John, my son-in-law does not know I'm here. She's here. John's relationship with his mother-in-law, Joan, was pretty much non-existent. Sherry said she couldn't stand the fact that when her mother called the house, John barely said two words to her. Well, I thought it was time for them to talk. So we brought Joan to the Dr. Phil house. I'm in the car going to see Dr. Phil. John, my son-in-law does not know I'm here. I'm real nervous. He's going to be definitely shocked. I don't know what to expect. I'm very apprehensive about what's going to happen with John and with my daughter, Sherry. Uh, I'm hoping Dr. Phil will be able to straighten them out. If not, we'd like to have closure on this. Is it too late for y'all? No. No. Today is a new day. Today, we're, we're not moving back. We're moving forward. She was bringing back the past. 
We're going to forget the past and move forward. I mean, we have to. No, you don't. You do have a choice. And I'm just asking you, what is the choice? I want to learn how to agree to disagree without <clears throat> conflict. Well, yeah, I'm going to give you some rules for fighting. And I tell you what, number one is you stay in the moment. You don't ever bring up the past. That's hard. And person. you got to stay on point. I just have a hard time when I do say, all right, John, I want to sit down and talk to you. And he puts his feet up on the table, and this is what he does. All right, talk. What do you got to say now? That's no different than if you walked over and spit in her face. You being condescending, saying you're not worthy of my time. You know, nobody's ever going to respond to that well. How do you get along with her mother? I get along with her mother fine. I mean, they're 400 miles away. Uh, no, she's not 400 miles away. She's here. Next time in Dr. Phil's Man Camp, a dinner for six turns into the ultimate food fight. Grow the f up. She told me to stay out of her marriage. She better not help my f husband that way. I'm done. Great. And there's nothing masculine or macho about calling a woman. I am so afraid right now. A visit from John's mother in law sends him into a tailspin. I'm out of here, dude. What sent John packing? That is so what she just told me. I think the world of you, Phil, but she lied to you this morning. Don't miss next week's Man Cam. That's next Monday. You definitely do not want to miss next week's Man Cam. For more information about these couples and exclusive footage from this Dr. Phil house, go to drphil.com. Thanks and so long. Last night was a pretty weird night. There were a lot of emotions in the house. Um, unfortunately, John left and Sherry was very upset. There was a little fight between Amanda and I before dinner, but it's because I'm selfish. That's what I'm here for. Between me and Scott, everything went great. Nothing's changed. Amanda and I went through a really hard time. She was there for me. She supported me. She went through a really hard time. I was there for her. I supported her. And I think we both kind of realized we talked about it later, but that uh, it was like the first time in a really long time that we were both there for each other, and uh, we both felt very close to each other, and we felt like we were, we were a team finally, which was really good. I feel like I haven't had my husband since we had our big fight when he was gone for eight months, and I mean, I remember saying, like, my husband's gone, and everybody said, he's not gone, he's alive, and I said, yeah, but the Nick I know is gone, and... As of last night, I feel like I have my neck back. I identify with John. We're a lot like we're hotheads, and we uh, wear our emotions on our sleeve all the time. Yeah, I don't care if anybody don't have like what I have to say. It doesn't matter to me. I want him to stay because I can identify with him. We can work. I think we can help each other.